What's up, friends? Well, June is here, and so we are fast approaching a Nintendo Direct. A Direct that very well could be the last Direct of the Nintendo Switch era. With the Sony State of Play, Xbox Games Showcase, Ubisoft Forward, and Summer Games Fest all out of the way, it is truly Nintendo's time to shine in what was once E3 season. Each of these prior presentations had something interesting to offer, but I would say that none of them particularly stood out. Xbox's was fairly good, but here in this E3 season, I'm hoping that Nintendo can bring the best of the best, even here at the end of a console generation. Of course, we all need to uh, hype responsibly and make sure our expectations are in the right place for this Direct. This Direct is interesting, because I believe that this is the Direct that has been announced the longest before its actual debut, as it was announced about a month ago at the same exact time the successor to the Nintendo Switch was officially confirmed. And as many have expected, myself included, it is going to be tomorrow, Tuesday, June 18th, uh, looking at the past Nintendo Directs in June, I in fact already had the state on my calendar a few months ago, and so it has been very nice to enter into June knowing for certain that there would be a Direct, especially after the uncertainty of the past three years of Directs in June, and the uncertainty of Directs this year. And thus, it is excellent to finally have the first Direct of the year, and once again, what is most likely the final Direct of the Nintendo Switch era, even if we shouldn't expect too much from this Direct. This Direct is to end an era of the most excellent, most exciting Directs ever to be released, but I don't believe that this ending shall be as excellent or as exciting as the rest of the era. I still expect some excitement and surprise. It really wouldn't be a Nintendo Direct without any surprises, but I am entering into this Direct with relatively low expectations. But who knows? Directs always manage to surprise us, and I am always willing to present my predictions of both safe and surprising, both very likely and utterly unlikely. So, here, a day away from what is most likely the final Direct of the Nintendo Switch era, let me share my predictions one last time for Nintendo Switch games for this Direct. Starting off is a prediction that I won't ever give up on. I never will. Uh, well, okay, in all honesty, I'm about to stop anticipating ports of Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD for the Switch, even if it does make so much sense to swiftly port these Zelda titles over in the wake of Tears of the Kingdom releasing and the craving from the fanbase for a more traditional title in the series. Traditional Zelda needs to continue to exist in some form, even if it is only as remakes and remasters for a time. If these ports are to a long last release, we will be able to play every single 3D Zelda game on the Switch, and that would be wonderful for a series that I love so much. It just makes so much sense, and we've been waiting the entire generation for these games. Then again, this is Nintendo we're talking about, and they don't like to make sense most of the time. And my next prediction is that it is about time for the next mainline Mega Man title, presumably Mega Man 12. It's been six years since the release of the previous game. It has been six years since the release of Mega Man 11, and though we have not exactly been starved for Mega Man content, with plenty of legacy collections over the past few years, I still feel that the moment seems right for Mega Man. We have so much of the Blue Bomber's history available on modern platforms conveniently, and so it's the perfect period to give him a new adventure. Not only will it get me excited for a new Mega Man title, but it will also encourage me to actually play through the games in the series that I have yet to within those aforementioned legacy collections. Because while I do have an admiration and a respect for the Blue Bomber, I haven't played too many of the mainline Mega Man games. I have most of the legacy collections on Switch, but I've only really dabbled in them. I'd always like to be encouraged to experience more. This next prediction is pretty much a given in Directs. By far, one of the most predictable things about Directs is that they are nearly never predictable. I am expecting something unexpected. Wait, so does that mean that it's expected since I'm expecting the unexpected? Well, you get what I mean. I'm expecting there to be something that no one could have predicted. 
As I've said, this is most likely the last Direct completely dedicated to the Switch, and so we can predict that there will most likely be relatively smaller projects, such as remakes and remasters, though what these smaller projects are is still up in the air. They could still completely surprise us and catch us off guard with delight. Speaking of catching us off guard with delight, I hope that tomorrow will be a rare date indeed. As some have noted, the rare games announced in the Partner Showcase back in February seem to tease that more rare games are on their way to Nintendo Switch Online. Like many others, I would love to see Donkey Kong 64 and Banjo-Tooie specifically. I have fond memories of the former, and after playing Banjo-Kazooie for the first time ever late last year, I'm eager to play the latter. Other rare games that would be wonderful to see include Diddy Kong Racing and Perfect Dark. I it would just be wonderful to see more games from these brilliant developers on Switch. These were some of the hallmarks of Nintendo's library in the 90s, and it would be good to see them once again on Nintendo platforms. This is a prediction that I, in particular, have really been wanting to come true, because ever since its surprise release back in September, F-099 has had several free updates. But I want something a little more scrumptiously meaty. I would love for F-099 to receive the Tetris 99 treatment and receive paid DLC included with a physical version. In my opinion, the core concept of F-099 works so well with the 99 formula, and I would love to see it expanded upon with more modes and more content, as well as the preservation of a physical version that this surprisingly spectacular game so deeply deserves. I said it before when talking about the game, but F-Zero returned, and it didn't return in the form we expected at all, but it returned very well, and I would love to see it continue to receive the attention that it deserves, and I would love to have a physical version of F-099 to add to my library. Alright, for my next prediction, I have a question. Which Mario Sports series is not on Switch? Well, of all the full-fledged Super Mario Sports series, Mario Baseball is the only major one not accounted for on Switch. I would love to experience the series, as I've never actually played a single Mario Baseball game, and I'm interested in witnessing the Mushroom Kingdom's unique spin on the diamond. How likely is a new game in the series, especially after its absence for so long? Well, it hasn't seen a title since the Wii. Uh, then again, neither had Mario Strikers, and I never expected that series of all series to return. Or, uh, more specifically, as the Switch title will definitely be called, Super Mario Super Duper Super Super Slugger Sluggers Super Edition. Alright, moving on. As we have come up on the end of the Switch's lifespan, I've wanted this period to be akin to that of the 3DS's. Specifically in relation to Kirby. The 3DS was saturated with a grand total of six Kirby spin-offs, several of them released near the end of the console's lifespan. The Switch has only half that amount of pink puffball side dishes. This would be a sweet and simple conclusion for a console that has seen some of the lowest lows and the highest highs for Kirby. But I don't think they're suddenly going to release three Kirby spin-offs, and so the Switch will never ever rival the 3DS as the ultimate Kirby machine. Another sweet and simple way to finish up the Switch's lifespan would be a new Mario Party. It would be a wonderful way to celebrate the conclusion of the Switch. I hope that this title would develop the classic gameplay beyond what was seen in Super Mario Party, and without all the gimmicks of course, which, though I did enjoy, were not exactly necessary to the core experience. And I hope that such a hypothetical title would not sully the excellent track record of the series on Switch. The Mario Party series fits so well into the role of end-of-generation filler titles, as it did on 3DS, and I hope we see one last party with Mario and friends on the Switch. Alright, this next prediction is a bit of a stretch mo, but Intelligent Systems recently updated their website to have a section specifically dedicated to the Pushmo series that they have developed. Why would they do that if the series is, in essence, extinct? Unless... UNLESS a revival. Unless a revival's planned, alright? Hear me out. Uh, I want a revival of Pushmo. For purely selfish reasons. I never got to play any of the games, as they were all digital titles, and I never had the chance to buy them. But the premise of the games looks so enjoyable and interesting. It 
seems like it could be a simple eShop title that would work well here before the next console generation begins. I really want to play Pushmo, even if it is a port rather than an entirely new game. Better yet, hopefully it's a Pushmo collection of all the games on the Wii and 3DS. That would be delightful. Alright, uh, this next prediction is one of several similar ones, because I just really want DLC for all the great games of last year, of which Super Mario Bros. Wonder was a strong standout. A game that was at long last a worthy successor to Super Mario World in both design and imagination. The game has such brilliant creativity, and I'm certain that the developers have many ideas that went unused, and I would love to see any of these ideas as DLC for the game, even if it would just be a badge or two. New Super Mario Bros. 2 cannot continue to be the only mainline Mario game with paid downloadable content, especially when DLC for Super Mario Bros. Wonder makes so much sense. With the badge system and with the way levels are structured in the world, I could easily add on a few more levels or a few more badges. It would just make sense. And yeah, I also want to keep on playing Super Mario Bros. Wonder even though I've 100%ed and gone above and beyond that. It's just how much I love the game. It is a really good 2D Mario game. I could rant about Super Mario Bros. Wonder all day, uh, but let my excitement be toned down a bit for my next prediction because my next prediction is Mother 3. Need I say any more? Mother 3 was released on the Japanese NSO, but I want it to at long last come to the West too. It would be the perfect time as Earthbound celebrates its 30th anniversary in August. It would be such an utterly unfathomable surprise and joy. But as always, I am not keeping my hopes up. I never have, and I never will, for Mother 3. Mother 3 may never come to the West. And again, we said the same thing about Earthbound Beginnings, but that was a bit of a different case as that already had an in-house translation and Mother 3, to our knowledge, doesn't. But you never know. And if it does ever happen, I once again promise that I will share my favorite Mr. Siren quote. And I will probably also scream at uh, far too loud a volume, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. If we ever get to that. Okay, Kid Icarus Uprising is now over 10 years old, and I say that it deserves a second shot on Switch. Of course, I'm far from the only one to say that, and I'm not the first person to say that. So many people want Kid Icarus Uprising on Switch. and. Having finally played it earlier this year, I can easily declare that this game is my favorite 3DS title. It is charming, challenging, and original in both its gameplay and its plot, and it is truly a game that only Mr. Sakurai could create. More people need to experience this sparkling gem of a game. It would require some adjustments to be ported over, but it would still be the great game that it always has been. And honestly, any adjustments to the controls would probably make it more enjoyable and more accessible of a game. We do know that Bandai Namco is working on numerous projects with Nintendo, and they have worked closely with Sakurai in the past, so we'll see, we'll see. All right, let's turn to a, another somewhat somber prediction, uh, one I always predict, just like Mother 3. This is something that I always ask myself before a direct. Could this be it? Could this be the day we at long last witness the re-reveal of Metroid Prime 4? And I always have that feeling. I always have that feeling that it could be it. I always have this feeling that today's the day. But that feeling always fails me. Will it fail me yet again? I don't know. I, I never know. Metroid Prime 4 was announced at E3. Uh, again, remember when E3 was a thing? And it was announced at E3 this month, seven years ago. And it restarted development a little over five years ago. It, it, it's done. It has to be done at this point. What is Nintendo doing with it? Are they going to release it on Switch? Are they going to release it on the Switch's successor? Are they going to release it on both? <sighs> I... I know that we'll see it, we'll have to see it one day, but it's just a question of when. And if I keep predicting it each time, it's gonna come true eventually, right? All right, all right. My next prediction is, I promise, the very last time I will hope for any update to Tears of the Kingdom. This is the last time I'm predicting it here at what is, again, probably the last direct for the Nintendo Switch. 
I know, I know, I, I shouldn't expect it. I know that the developers have already stated that they will not release any downloadable content. I know that I should give up an entire year after the release of the game. I know, I know. But I can hope for a small, simple update, right? Just, come on, just add Master Mode, add a Music Player, add a Trial of the Sword, and Story DLC. That's all I ask. That, that's a simple thing, right? Is that too much to ask for, Fujibayashi? Is that too much to ask for, Aonuma? Please? Pretty please? What if it's pretty please with a cherry on top? How does that sound? Something that's probably far more likely to happen is that we will see... Uh, who is it again? Sanic the Hot Dog? Or something like that? Well, with Sonic... Hold on. Is it Sonic Times Shadow Generation? Sonic Cross Shadow Generation? Sonic X Shadow Generation? Or is it just... Sonic Shadow Generations. I don't know, but with that game recently receiving a short spotlight at the Summer Games Fest, I hope that we see more of the blue blur in a Nintendo Direct, whether this is that remaster specifically or something else entirely. Come on, Sega, put Sonic Dream Team on other platforms, please. But it's probably more likely that it'll just be Sonic Shadow Generations. I'm actually pretty interested to check out that game, as I've never actually played a 3D Sonic game before, and, and I want to experience it, even if it is just from the Boost era. And I want to have that taste of Sonic's history as varied as it is. And I also appreciate that Sega is acknowledging the more cult classic games, like of course Shadow the Hedgehog, and drawing heavily upon that game, and also Sonic Adventure 2. You gotta appreciate that from Sega. They do a lot of things right. They know how to work well with their fans, for the most part. Alright, my next prediction would probably be one of the most fitting things for the Switch. What would be a better way to conclude a generation of Wii U ports than another Wii U port? With most of the highlights of the Wii U library already ported to the Switch, and Nintendo once again a healthy company with a healthy console, I'm certain that we will not see many more Wii U ports, if any at all whatsoever, on the Switch's successor. And so, one or more last Wii U ports would be welcome. I already mentioned Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, but it would also be nice to see Yoshi's Woolly World, as it is, after all, superior to Yoshi's Crafted World in so many ways and also Xenoblade Chronicles X, so as to complete the collection of Xenoblade games on Switch. We would like to play more Wii U ports here at the end of a generation that has had so many of them. So many people have not experienced what the Wii U had to offer, and I'm very happy that I did get to experience and love the Wii U despite its many flaws, and I would love for Nintendo to port the final few great games from the Wii U to the Switch. Alright, after all these years of the Switch, Nintendo Switch Online's collection of legacy content may not be the most ideal, but you certainly have to admit that it has grown into a fairly robust library of classic games. Nonetheless, there are still many games that are missing from this service, such as the aforementioned Rare games, the original Super Smash Bros., most of the Wario Land series, and many, many Game Boy Advance games. I would especially love to finally be able to play Four Swords via Nintendo Switch Online. I've always wanted to play Four Swords, uh, especially more so now after playing Triforce Heroes, but it's just so hard to come by, and even if you do have Four Swords, it's so hard to even be able to play it with other players. Here's another consistent prediction of mine, Metroid Prime 2. Metroid Prime is a truly legendary trilogy, and after how stunning Metroid Prime Remastered was, I would love to see the rest of the series make its way onto Switch, even if it is only as ports, as the rumors almost two years ago suggested. However, it's been quite some time since those rumors, and my personal theory is that after seeing the critical reception to Metroid Prime Remastered, Nintendo decided to scrap the ports and instead completely remaster Metroid Prime 2, and perhaps Metroid Prime 3 as well, again, to prepare us for Metroid Prime 4. And that's just my personal theory as to why they're still not on the Switch yet. I have come to love Metroid Prime 2 as of late. I started playing it for the first time earlier this year, and I'm almost finished with it. And as odd as it sounds, the Sanctuary Fortress actually has made me start to adore the game much more than I did in the first few hours. I don't know, I just really like this area. And I didn't even mind the Spider Guardian that much. Okay, I, I actually did. Uh, but 
I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would, but that's probably because I was able to beat it on the first try. Barely. Just barely. It almost killed me. Yeah, I would probably have hated it if it had killed me. I would have lost uh, a lot of progress. I did not save in a while. Metroid Prime 2 and also Metroid Prime 3 would be welcome additions to the Switch. Okay, but the Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake recently receiving its platform announcement three years after its initial reveal, there have been rumors swirling around. There have been murmurings that it will finally be showcased in this Direct, and more importantly perhaps, that it will be a remake not only of the third game in the series, but rather the entire Airdrick trilogy, Dragon Quest 1 through 3. I would love to experience the first three games in this truly classic series, especially with the beautiful HD 2D visuals. I've played several Final Fantasy games, but I've never actually played a Dragon Quest game, and I've never really gotten into the series. But if the first three were conveniently and beautifully available, perhaps with a few quality of life improvements as well, I would love to experience the grandfathers of all RPGs. I would love to experience the grandfathers. I would love to experience the forefathers of all RPGs for the first time. So, it has been over 10 years since the last brand new Donkey Kong game, Tropical Freeze. And we know that Retro has been working on other projects besides Metroid Prime 4. Could they have all been canned? I hope not. Then again, for many years, the rumor has been that Nintendo EAD is developing a new Donkey Kong game, potentially a 3D one. I have a hard time believing this old rumor now, as with the Switch's successor and most likely a new 3D Mario on the way, uh, EAD would be busy developing the next big Mario title. But then again, perhaps they could have already finished this theoretical Donkey Kong game and are just saving it for now or for the next console. I don't know. But whether 3D or 2D, now or later, Nintendo EAD or Retro Studios, I would love to see the seminal Simeon return in some form after such a long absence of his series. Speaking of long absences of series, Star Fox has been absent from action, aside from a handful of crossover appearances, this entire generation. And I certainly don't blame Nintendo after the critical and commercial response to Star Fox Zero. But I miss the series deeply, and it's not even one of my favorites. That's just how noticeable the absence of Star Fox is. It has been so long since we received a brand new entry in the series, not counting Star Fox 2. And I believe that after all these years of negligence and missteps, the series needs to be bold in experimentation, both thematically and mechanically, both in presenting new styles of gameplay, but also in telling a unique story. I don't think that Nintendo would pull out something this substantial late into the lifespan of a console. But one can always hope. I just really want Star Fox and receive the new game that it deserves. Because Star Fox really has not evolved that much over all of its existence. And in order to succeed, I think that it does need to do that. Okay, here is probably one of the most likely predictions of all of my predictions. It's Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD will be releasing later this month, and honestly we don't need to know that much more about it before it releases, a year after its surprising announcement. The game mostly just improves the resolution of the original 3DS title and changes the controls, and so I don't expect that many major additions. But uh, one final time before it releases, I will once again declare that I would rather that they had released the 3DS remake of the first game instead of releasing the second game. But I'm still looking forward to experiencing Dark Moon for the first time ever. Uh, it's just that the Luigi's Mansion remake never really got the chance it deserved to succeed, and I would love to see that corrected on Switch. But now instead, we're getting Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which I'm still happy for, and I'm still excited to experience, even if it is most likely the weakest game in the series. All right, I promise that this is the last DLC for a game from last year that I will wish for. I, I promise. In all likelihood, however, it is most likely that none of the games from last year that I predicted for DLC will get DLC, but if I had to pick one that would get it, it would certainly be Pikmin 4. This game is by far the biggest Pikmin game ever created, but I would love even more Pikmin goodness, such as a new game plus mode, a map editor, or even just new Dandori challenges. And if you're gonna do the latter Nintendo, 
please, please improve the Dandori Battle multiplayer while you're at it. It does not live up to Bingo Battles whatsoever. But please, just let me be the greedy, grasping, gluttonous Pikmin fan that I am, as desperate as always. The Pikmin fanbase has enormously expanded over the past year, and I don't want these fresh fans to experience the starvation that us veterans have had to endure for so long. See, I'm just being selfless. I just want the new young Pikmin fans to not suffer like I have. But yeah, I, I am being selfish. I just want DLC for Pikmin 4. It is now one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, and I'll give it some time, make sure it's not recency biased, but honestly, it might be my favorite game of all time, period. It is, oh, it's so good. I could just go on about that for so long, but I need to move on to my final prediction. And this final prediction is something that comes true in every single Direct, at least for me. It's third-party titles I do not care about. It happens in every single Direct, without exception. And even though I have been expanding my tastes and experiences to the best of my abilities over the past few years, nonetheless, I have relatively limited tastes. I like a lot of game series, but my love is reserved only for a select few. I am, however, happy to see any beloved series, whether first party or third party, shine on the Switch. And with that, those are my predictions for the June 2024 Nintendo Direct. Oh, I'm so excited. I always love Rex, even if it is one that I'm entering into with low expectations. It's just so, so surreal to think that this is most likely the final Direct of the Switch era. Once again, this has been an era with some huge, enormous, mind-blowing surprises. I don't have time to list them all off here, but man, in this console generation, the Rex have really become such a, a huge thing for us dedicated Nintendo fans, and they really have just brought so much surprise, delight, and excitement to Nintendo fans. I loved Rex, and I have loved them especially in this Nintendo Switch era. And so, I'm looking forward to tomorrow reacting to and discussing the Nintendo Direct. But, but that is tomorrow, and tomorrow will come later. But, for now, I will just say thank you so much for listening. Thank you for once again humoring my predictions and excited rambling. Thank you so much. This has been Kiro Tarkai, and I will see you next time. It's good to be back to recording. Um, I've been absent for a few months, uh, not not because of anything bad. I've just been very busy, uh, but I wanted to get back into recording for a while. And I was going to record a video when they announced the successor to the Switch, but I just couldn't find time. I've again been very busy, but I'm excited to be back to talking what I'm passionate about, and I'm very passionate about the excitement of Direct. So I'm looking forward to watching that Direct tomorrow. But yeah, I'm back for anyone who cared in the slightest. Uh, and I'm looking forward to continuing to discuss things that I love.